Do cables matter? I don't know. I heard some cables the other day that seemed to matter. Now those were very expensive cables, but these, not so much. I mean, they're not freebies. I think these were like maybe 30, 40 bucks on Amazon, made in China. Oxygen-free copper, silver plated. Gonna use them on my CD player. I mainly got them because they're short and uh, they look cool. But, you know, they maybe they sound better than the sort of like total freebie little cables, which I'll show you after I do the first test. Let's see, for listening here, we're gonna use my new Steven Wilson remix of Gentle Giant's Freehand. One of my favorite albums of all time. The copy that I had forever was a, a cutout, used cutout. And if, if you don't know about cutouts, well, those of you watching my channel totally know about cutouts because you're all old old timers like me. Um, anyway, I had this old cutout used version that I bought back in, uh, oh geez, early 80s. Yeah, early 80s, maybe even 1980. But I was listening to it a little while back and I was like, you know, this is like your favorite album and you're still listening to this crackly ass, beat up, falling apart inner sleeve and outer sleeve version of it. Come on, dude. If you're gonna try the Steven Wilson remixes, this is the way to start. So, got a CD, freehand, Steven Wilson remix. We're gonna try it on my Rotel CD player, and uh, I think it'll sound really nice with the old cables, you know, because it's a nice CD player. My nice ADS speakers, my nice Beaver Valley tube amp, and my nice Adcom preamp. I think it's all gonna sound good. Maybe the weak link there is the cables. So we'll try the old cables first, and then we'll go with the new cables, and uh, and I will see if I think I hear a difference that is appreciable and noteworthy uh, at all, really. Do I notice any difference? That'll be interesting anyway. Welcome to the Lancaster Hi-Fi YouTube channel. Let's get into some cables. See the Rotel CD player, Rotel RCD855 on the bottom there. Adcom GTP500 Mark II preamp slash tuner. And my Beaver Valley tube amp on top there. And you can see my first set of sort of non-freebie cables attaching the preamp to the power amp up there. Again, those aren't very expensive cables either. Those were like 20 something dollars. Just give you a bit uh, wider view of the setup here. You can just see the speakers at the edges there. So there we've got the left and the right. And the right is behind a bit of clutter on my bench there from my shelves. You know, that's maybe not ideal, of course. This is not an ideal listening room. This is what I've got. Yeah, I've set up the tripod with the camera very carefully so that it is equidistant between the speakers and pointed at the midpoint between those speakers. And now I'm trying to scooch behind here and get into my own decent listening position. Let's go. I will now switch out the cables. Um, or So these have a, um, a locking mechanism that is you unscrew them just a bit and then cinch them down. It's kind of cool. Honestly, that's another reason I got these. It's because of that locking mechanism. Just be just tired of having the outside rings being slightly different sizes than others so that the various cables that I've got fit sometimes loosely, sometimes super tightly. All right, I'm gonna try to reach over here find cables in the back without being able to see what I'm doing. Always fun. Ow! Tubes are hot! These are significantly beefier. I may have to scooch the whole unit out a little bit to fit back there. Oh, 
Spider-Man. So here are the old cables, paired to cable. Don't even know where I would have gotten these. Probably came with some piece of gear that I bought back in the day. As you can see, quite thin. So now we shall see here. Comparison. Did I hear any difference? All right, let me back up. How would I review my new cables versus the old? These are a whole lot easier to deal with. They are way more bendy, flexible. There's no cinching, you know, screwing, you know, that has to be done to lock them in place. They fit really nicely and well. The other ones are, say that my major problem with them is they're too stiff. I had to move my whole rig out from the wall a little bit in order to accommodate them. But if through the bulk that makes them stiffer, they achieve better sound, then it wasn't that big a deal. I was able to move my rig out, you know, this much and accommodate them. So no big deal. And they were a pain in the butt to get, you know, tightened, you know, re again, reaching around to the back from the front. But again, worth the one-time pain in the butt if, if they provide better sound. So then, do they provide better sound? Well, I'm not going to go back and forth <laughs> to verify my impressions. That said, I did have an impression with these of a slightly veiled sound. And by slightly veiled, yeah, a little less detail in the high end, perhaps. Maybe some noise. And I didn't notice those same issues with the new cables. The new cables just, it just sounds good. I'll have to go back through the recording. I was very careful to position the camera with its microphones nearly perfectly centered between the speakers and so on. So one thing I can do is upload the audio into Audacity and literally compare the levels, uh, compare waveforms. Uh, is there any visible difference when I look at the digitized waveforms on the screen? So maybe I'll do that. We'll see how that goes. Hell, I could even, I think with Audacity, I might even be able to do Fourier analysis.
What else maybe did I notice? Was the bass a bit even overpowering with these than it was with the new ones? Or was I just used to the sound by the time I heard the new cables? Because this listening room is a bit bassy. The back wall there is, is concrete. The whole positioning is not super ideal relative to the distance from the speakers to the camera. That's like, um, that was like 68 and a half inches each, whereas the speakers are 96 inches apart. So ideally you'd want an equilateral triangle. That said, I can check and see from my listening position, was it more nearly an equilateral triangle? One issue with my listening might be that I've aimed the speakers at the camera and not where my head was behind the camera. And my head was uh, good, um, like, yeah, three feet behind the camera. Let's see how that is. But, no. So yeah, my head more nearly an equilateral triangle. My head was about 96 inches from each speaker, give or take an inch maybe. And the, the speakers are 96 inches apart. But I think I was catching a bit more bass heaviness because I didn't have the speakers towed to point right at my head. Always fun to get new stuff, try it out. You only get one chance, you know, in this kind of situation to do a uh, somewhat well, to record a comparison, so that's kind of neat, kind of fun. And I just thought I'd invite you all along to do it with me. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. Is this sort of listening test useless? Do I include long enough samples of the audio to provide a meaningful comparison for you? Or do I record, do I include like couple second snippets so that I could still monetize the video. My inclination is to go towards the longer samples and not bother with being able to monetize in this particular case. I do like being able to include some music. It just means that I can't make any money from the video. I kind of doubt this video is going to get all that many views anyway. We'll see. Hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you again soon. Still, an order of magnitude more costly than the sorts of cables that uh, I was using previously, uh, the flimsy little ones. Let's see, currently on my turntable, Gina Vanelli, brother to brother. See there, tucked between the Xbox 360 and the CD player is my new iFi Micro Phono 2 Phono Preamp. And uh, that is courtesy of, shit, Jeff, and I, I can't remember his last name, of um, Jeff by way of Chris Har. Thanks to both of you.